It's dull, it's chilly, and the garden's done, wrapped up and ready for its winter slumber. What, you might ask, could possibly be so now? Well, a fair bit, as it turns out. So discard the end of season blues and don't ditch the garden for the next few months because, believe it or not, there's sowing to be done. Come on. To my mind, there's more to be sown now than either a few weeks earlier or a few weeks later. It gives us a perfect opportunity to make a jump start on next season because the soil is still slightly warm from uh, summer and winter is still a few weeks away yet, at least here in my area, which is equivalent to zone eight. First up is this old favorite, fava or broad beans. Now these are the hardiest of all the beans that can be sown in the closing chapters of this season to set us up for a stonking early harvest in the next. Fava beans are a bit like Goldilocks. You don't want to sow them too early because they will grow sort of tall and fleshy and then get a walloping from a sudden cold spell. But equally, you don't want to sow them too late and then have the seeds not germinate at all and then just rot away but sow them just right, and they will produce short, stocky seedlings with an excellent root system that will then be raring to go in the spring. Now, I've sown them directly outside in the ground, and that's worked really well, and also in plug trays. And to be honest, plug trays seem to work best for me, so I'm just gonna stick with that this time round. So I'm just gonna pop each seed in about one inch or three centimeters deep into these nice chunky plug trays here. Now, when you're picking up the seeds, just watch for any that look a bit suspect. This one's a bit mangled and blackened, so just discard those. You just wanna stick with fresh seed uh, that's reliable. And these will get watered. Now, these are gonna go into my greenhouse, but a cold frame or any slightly protected area would do. The reason I'm being a bit more cautious this season is that last winter, we had a really cold snap of conditions that got down to about 14 Fahrenheit or minus 10 Celsius. That in itself is probably okay, but it was accompanied with some really, really bone chilling winds. And those turned my fava bean seedlings into absolute tatters. Now, if you don't have protection like that, or you get really quite cold, severe winters, then just wait until early spring to sow these guys. Now, the idea is we want these to germinate before cold weather stops growth. So in my region, to be honest, sowing in early November is absolutely optimal. The crows are incredibly noisy today, so do excuse them. Is it a crow though? I'm not sure, let me know down below. Anyway, final point is that if you're sowing in the autumn, make sure you choose a hardy variety of fava bean suitable for sowing at this time of year. There's a surprising amount to be sowing at this time of year, to be honest with you. And keeping our fingers on the pulse, we've got another legume for you, which is peas. And I've chosen another hardy variety suitable for overwintering. So the variety I've chosen to sow is called Meteor. Now, if you can't find this, there will be other suitable autumn sowing varieties. What I love about Meteor is it's one of the hardiest and soonest to crop varieties. It might be ready to pick as soon as late spring and the pods are beautifully filled as well. It's also a dwarf variety, which means it's great for growing in containers or if your garden is a little bit exposed and windy. Now, if you take a closer look at the seeds, you will see that they are round, and usually the hardiest peas are round like this. You get wrinkled peas, but those tend to collect moisture within those wrinkles, and then the moisture sits there and it can cause the seeds to rot. So a little kind of aside. Now, I'm not gonna sow these directly into the ground, and that's for two reasons. Firstly, if it's cold and wet, then the pea seeds might actually rot away, but more likely those mice will get hold of them. So by sowing them into uh, containers or plug trays, then that won't happen. I'm actually going for my go-to favorite for these kind of deep rooted seeds, and that's these toilet roll tubes. Now toilet roll tubes do tend to get very soft and start breaking apart over the winter, but I find they hold together just long enough until spring when they're planted. So I've gone in with my peat free, all purpose potting mix. I'm just sort of squashing it down a bit to give myself about an inch or two of depth. And then I'm simply gonna drop in 
two seeds per cardboard tube. I find it so satisfying sowing chunky seeds like this. So once these have been sown, I'm gonna cover them over, give them a water, and they'll be grown on in either a cold frame or a greenhouse. And I'm gonna pop them into a sort of lidded container to make double sure those mice don't get at them just till they are germinated. Instead of cardboard tubes, you could actually use newspaper pots, works beautifully. And if you'd like to know how to make those, then I will pop a link to a video that shows you how down below. I'll plant these out in early spring and they'll probably be around this tall by then and they will go into a sunny position in well-drained soil against some sort of twiggy pea sticks to help the seedlings stay upright. Sweet peas are started off just like peas. Now of course you can't eat sweet peas but they will feed you in another way. Their beautiful flowers and sweet scent will nourish your soul. They will brighten your day and offer a steady supply of posies to bring in the house and brighten up your home. I think gardening needs to feed every single piece of you, including your nature-inspired spirit. It's been very mild here and we've had a very late end to the season. And there's something kind of poetic about harvesting the last of the sweet peas as we sow the new ones for next season. These are gonna be sown exactly the same way as our peas here, in these tubes, two seeds, and again about an inch to two inches or three to five centimeters deep. I am amazed at the variety of sweet peas you can get. There are so, so many different types. So I'd like to explore this in more detail at some point, but I've just got one for next season, and it offers a nice mix of colors, which I'll look forward to. Sweet peas do like it a little bit warmer to germinate, so I'm gonna germinate them indoors, and then once they are up, bring them back outside, and again, it'll just be in the cold frame or a greenhouse till spring. They'll be planted out in about mid-spring when I know there's a little bit of stretch of slightly warmer weather, so they're not gonna get sort of frosted at night. And I will plant them against some sort of supports, probably the obelisk again there, because it just looks so beautiful. And the flowers, well, the scent is heaven scent. I strongly believe it's best to start your onions from seed. Seed means you can multi-sow and then plant out and grow your onions as clusters, which makes the most efficient use of space. However, if you are itching to get on and plant something else this autumn, you can start onions from sets. Here they are. And these aren't any old sets, these are awesome planting onion sets. Sets are basically immature bulbs that have been harvested after their first season, and they will then, in their second season, grow out to form those big juicy bulbs that we are after. Now, ordinarily, onions will flower in their second season, but these sets have been heat treated to avoid that. Now, by starting them off in autumn, what we can potentially do is get the earliest crop of onions of the entire season. So these autumn planted onions should crop a full three to four weeks ahead of those planted in the spring. I've got my pre-wetted all-purpose potting mix here and then to plant all I'm simply doing is taking my set and popping it down onto the potting mix and then sort of twisting it down into place so that just the tip is left showing. If you've never planted sets before then do take a close look because you can see here you've got the bottom where the old dead roots are and then the pointier tips so that's how to tell them apart just goes without saying make sure they are the right way up and twist them in like that now i've gone for slightly larger plugs here nice chunky size because these will put on a surprising amount of root over the winter months so i want to make sure there's enough room and then they will go out in kind of early to mid spring as you're planting, just be sure to check the sets that they're nice and firm and discard any that are a bit soft or have got a bit of mold or something like that on. We only want to be planting the very best sets. Now, as I said, they're going out in early to mid spring and they will go into a nice free draining soil in a sunny position and they will go between four to six inches. That is 10 to 15 centimeters apart in both directions. They're protruding a little bit too much actually, so I'm just gonna 
cover up just so the very tips are showing through. Now the reason I'm starting these off in plug trays is to give the ground a break from onions over the winter so that diseases aren't carried over on overwintering onions. I've had issues with downy mildew, so one way to try and break the cycle is just to start onions off away from the uh, vegetable garden so there's nothing over the winter. That way we get a nice clean start. But you can plant these sets directly into the ground, no problem. It also avoids problems of the birds pulling them up because they might think these are juicy worms. But if that does happen in ground, just push them back in or deploy a row cover to keep them off. I promised you we'd be planting some garlic a few videos back and not wanting to disappoint, I have sourced not one but four varieties for us to indulge in and I love garlic. Now broadly, garlic's divided into two different categories. You have got your hard necks, which are really hardy. They produce bulbs with fewer but fatter cloves and these lovely scapes, which are the edible flowers. Then you've got your soft necks. These bulbs have more cloves in them, though they are a little bit smaller. However, they are the best for storing. So I've got the four varieties here and they've all been bred on the Isle of Wight and they've all got white in the name. This is cork white and this is a hard neck with beautiful white bulb here. But I love this. This is a soft neck called Rhapsody White. And look at the beautiful purple flush on that. That's going to make such a pretty bulb. The soil here is already quite and well enriched with uh, plenty of garden compost, but I'm just going to go in with a little bit of bone meal and this will help promote really good root growth. And that's kind of, at this time of year, what we really want is to get those roots established ahead of the winter. And now for the absolutely most satisfying bit, breaking apart the bulbs into the individual clothes for planting. Look at these. So I'm gonna be planting these about six inches or 15 centimetres apart in both directions and they go quite deep. You want them so there's about two to three inches or up to seven centimetres of soil sitting above the top of the clove. So that's quite deep, but that will give them a nice bit of support. I've got this um, rake here marked up with spacings so I get it right. When it comes to garlic, the bigger the clove, the bigger the ultimate size of the bulb so if you have the luxury, do prioritise for planting the, the bigger cloves. Big isn't always better, but when it comes to garlic, it definitely is. These smaller ones, by the way, I'm just setting aside because what I'm going to do with those is plant them a little bit closer together in a container of potting mix and just grow them for what's called basically wet garlic, which is the young, fresh kind of stems. So I'm not going to bother growing this out to full bulbs because I know that they'll be really small and, and sort of spindly, but they'll make fresh, lovely garlic shoots, which I can eat and enjoy. And then to finish off, I'm just going to scatter over a little bit of uh, leaves here. Now this serves two purposes. It will insulate the soil from the worst of the cold and some of those leaves will rot down to help improve the soil as well not really necessary in my more benign climate but if your winters are very very cold and severe then this is just a little belts and braces approach to keep your garlic safe. Once you get to spring and the weather's improved just remove any leaves that are still here so that the uh, shoots have plenty of light and air getting at them. Wow there's quite a bit to be sown and planted now come to think of it. What will you be tempted to sow? Let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you next time.